Hi, this is Gaurav from School of DevOps and welcome to the second episode of DevOps Tool of the Week. The tool that we're going to talk about today is similar to the previous week's tool in two aspects. One, it's a visual tool. Second, it's, it has something to do with Docker. And the name of the tool itself is called as Portainer and it's actually a management UI for Docker. What is Portainer? Some of you may already be using Docker, some of you want to start with it. Now, if you look at Docker as a software, it's made up of two components. One is the Docker server or what we call as Docker engine. Second is the Docker CLI or the Docker client. Now, Docker engine is the one which gets things done, launches containers, runs it, manages the network interfaces and everything else. Now, the way we talk to the Docker engine is typically using that command line interface where we, where we run the commands such as Docker run, Docker start, Docker stop. And that's our interface to talk to the Docker engine. And if you look at the way this works, the Docker CLI talks to the Docker engine using the APIs. It's all exposed using the application programmable interface. And the great thing about this, if you've realized by now, is you can replace this tool which makes this API call then replace it with something else uh, using another programming language which can give you a graphical interface which also makes the same API calls. And that's exactly what Portainer is. It's a management interface for Docker. Why should you use Portainer? Now, if you want to get started with Docker quickly and get a visual idea about what is happening and you want to do everything using a visual interface, this is the perfect tool for you. And the, you know, it also works with not only the local Docker engine, but also a remote server. So you can manage multiple Docker instances using the same graphical interface. Portainer also comes with a library of pre-configured applications. So you can just go and click on one button and launch an application which launches the containers for you automatically. And it gives you the complete interface to manage your containers, networks, volumes, and almost everything that you could do with the Docker CLI. Portainer also has a support for Swarm orchestration engine. And that's about Portainer in brief. Let's have a look at the demo of this tool. To set up Portainer, I visit their official site that is portainer.io, P-O-R-T-A-I-N-E-R.io. Here you'll find all the information about the Portainer. And the best part about this is it's extremely simple to set up. How, uh, you know, we're just going to watch how easy it is. Uh, all you have to do is run those two commands. You can also connect to a swarm cluster. That's the, uh, you know, that's the instructions there. And you can access the, you know, detailed documentation at the bottom of that page. So we, I begin by creating a volume first. And the volume is important if you want to persist the data. If you even if you remove that port in a container, uh, if you come back and start it again or launch a new one with the same data, you have the data persistent between the you know the container uh, destru destruction, right? So that's where it is important. And I'm just gonna run copy and paste that command really. Control C and Control V works in the world of Docker. We are using the common options like port mapping. That is 9000 port. This is very important. This uh, particular minus V option where we are mounting a socket from our host to inside the port inner so that it when it tries to connect to docker it actually goes to the host and can manage everything on the host that it is running on now all it takes is the image to download so it actually took me less than a minute to launch port inner completely and i'm going to connect to that based on the ip address that you have you will decide which uh, which host name to use and this is where you define your admin username and the credentials I'm just going to call it as admin, provide a password, remember the password because this is what you're going to use to log in to Portainer when it's, it is launched. Now from the screen, you can either choose local or remote. Since we have mounted that socket, it also shows you the warning. So you have to have the socket mounted if that has to work or else you could also connect to a remote host. If you're connecting to a remote host, you'll have to provide uh, the host name, endpoint URL, and the TLS certificate. So make sure you have the certificates ready if you want to connect to the remote host. We're just connecting to the local, and we already see all the data related to our host. The same data that you have um, in number of containers, images, networks, volumes, everything is right there, and you can start managing your Docker host from here. 
no more docker cli you can manage everything through the graphical interface and good thing about this is you can also get the monitoring data you can define the refresh interval this is the live monitoring data getting collected from that container using the stats api and uh, you can watch memory cpu network utilization etc uh, you can also list your images you can list your containers so uh, these are all my images that i have uh, you can list the containers manage it from them uh, you can check the network configurations from here these are all my networks that i have as well as the drivers uh, the subnet you can create networks from here you can check the details on the volume or create one uh, look at the events observe uh, the events for your docker host uh, get the information about your docker engine that's your docker host the server and i have 1709 um, at this point of time the good thing about this is it comes also with the application template so this is one click one click deployment for your application actually and you can choose your you know um, application provide a name and all i need to do now is just click on that deploy the container button that's all that's all i need to do and it has already started deploying uh, it's already been deployed and i can go and manage start managing that check the uh, statistics or start managing it so if i go to the you know the, go to the container you can get the logs same things that you can do with docker cli check the logs connect to that everything can be done from here including the console that's the cool part so you can actually you know start stop you can manage uh, the life cycle of that container using those commands from there and this is where i'm going to connect through the console inside that mongodb and that's through web ui i don't have to run any command i don't even have to know any commands i can directly start managing using this portainer app right here and it's really really interesting application and it's very useful as well and it also reduces your learning curve when you start to, you know, start to manage your containers right there and uh, you can also connect to the remote urls and uh, this is where i'm stopping uh, some of the containers that i don't need uh, when i say kill it um, sends a kill e signal that is for sig term uh, initially and then sig 9 later um, and then remove just deletes the containers that i don't need so i've just cleaned up few of those containers and uh, they're gone from the list completely here you can also launch containers you can check the endpoints endpoints is where you can uh, add additional docker hosts so you can at the same time you can manage from the drop down menu you can uh, connect to any of those docker hosts you can configure your registries as well and uh, the credentials for that you can define all the settings from this terminal and uh, that's your dashboard uh, which shows you everything again and that is our quick tour of portainer if you like this content, do like, share and subscribe. You may also find links to our free courses in the description below along with some special offers for our premium courses. You can also visit us at schoolofdevops.com.